Hey people, so just a mini review of the X1 Nano. So new performance figures, um, there's already a full review on notebook checks, um, take a look at that, really detailed, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. But um, first impression is always that this is uh, impossibly thin and light, it's just, it's like a frisbee, it's, it's, can you see? It's remarkable, it's just... And uh, it also bends backwards completely, which is quite helpful. Don't hold it by the lid, uh, it's, it's not advised. <laughs> um, but just to say, even if you touch the lid, you'll see that it's actually quite um, really robust. Can't see any wrinkles on the display, so it's actually robust, but hold it by the chassis. So just from a user's perspective, for me, this laptop really feels very similar to an X1 Carbon. By that, I mean, it's just effectively a 13-inch Carbon that's thinner and lighter. To achieve this, Lenovo had to compress the keyboard a little bit. Let's have a chat on why this laptop is here. Back in 2015, Dell launched the XPS 13, and I think ever since it's just been a runaway success. In many ways, Lenovo lacked a product that can address that market, so it's a 13-inch super light. I mean, either way, technically, the X1 Carbon is for different, it's almost a more premium tier of product for that really, really um, demanding customer set who needs something really thin and light and where that last few hundred grams really means being able to carry something in their hand luggage or not. So on the inside, um, you have the privacy shutter and the quite a clean design. So the privacy shutter I really like. I can't find a way to see if this is on or off when I'm in the dark, um, other than switching on the webcam. So maybe that's something that can be improved with the next gen. But you know, it's, it's good to have the camera on top so you don't have the chin uh, view. Um, from if the webcam placement were at the bottom, that would be quite awkward. Uh, webcam quality distinctively sort of mediocre. Um, hopefully for the next gen, they can improve that. The color is really good and it's also a matte display, so you're not going to lose much to the reflection. Um, as you can see, the color is excellent. As the lid goes sort of um, nearly flat, the bottom of the lid actually tries to lift the laptop up, if that makes sense. So what that is doing is using the bottom edge of your lid to prop up the laptop. So that's actually quite an interesting design cue. Um, if you look at this one, it's actually the rubber edge which lifts the laptop up rather than, you know, a physically part of the lid. Of course, they all seem to rely on this rubber to lift it up more. Two, three years into it, you'll have a laptop that the edge is you know, worn. Obviously, you can sort of... Uh, double tape or sort of maybe put some adhesive at the back, but that's not really slight design shortcoming on this one. Very similar to the X1 Carbon speaker design. So two on the top and two on the base cover, so two here. Um, so it's a quarter cool speaker setup that the keyboard actually has shrunk quite noticeably. Uh, personally, the Carbon keyboard size is the absolute minimum that I'm happy to use. Um, I mean, this one, it's just, it's a little bit like the X13, it's just, it feels really different. The keyboard, it travel, it's more clicky than before. I think what it's trying to achieve is by having a more clicky keyboard, it tries to give you a more synthetic experience of a click without actually giving you the actual travel. The trackpad still really, really easily attracts fingerprint. I think it's just after a few days, it's really, we should have cleaned it before this video, but it's like, it retains a lot of the fingerprint. On this specific unit, uh, the trackpad seems to be, um, have a slight fitting issue. So if you, I'm not actually clicking on anything. You can hear strange squeaking noise coming through. So that's a full HD screen on the Carbon 6, and um, that's currently at 125%. So um, Carbon 7, full HD screen, and um, Nano with its um, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So as you can see where this article cuts off, at, and that sort of continues. Um, but what I will probably say is some people will certainly find that the font size on the 100% aspect ratio to be a little bit small. So the natural thing to do is put it to 1 to 5, which is fine. Um, but you sort of find that in reality you're back to the same point. So more expensive than the i5. Personally, we will probably have just got the i5 um, because it gives you almost quite comparable turbo boost. 
um, where the main difference is, I think it's um, the graphics side. So with the X1 Nano, this generation specifically, you're capped at 16 gigabytes. But I think with the first gen product of types, um, there's usually some artificial limit. It's a little bit peculiar. If I remember correctly, the X13, you can get 32 gig of RAM, whereas the 2000 Kong laptop, you're capped at um, sort of 16. It's a little bit peculiar. So the SSD in this laptop is a smaller format. So it's M2 2242. So it's not the same as the typical M2 you have. Um, a constraint on this laptop seems to be that if you want to upgrade the SSD, you should get a single sided M2. Um, at the moment, that seems to be capped at um, either one terabyte or 512. I can only find 512 single sided at the moment. So usual Wi-Fi 6, um, that's quite helpful, quite nice. We've not had any Wi-Fi issues. Coverage seems to be quite good in the office. Um, it's not a criticism to say that, you know, this laptop, when you're running really heavy stuff, it still makes a noise. That's, you know, that's totally expected. It's just, I think the Mac M1 has really changed the expectation in what you should be able to get. But just to explain, um, this laptop has some um, two ports, so two Thunderbolt 4, so effective USB-C, that's really fast, um, and one audio jack. Um, pretty much nothing else. The only other difference is um, that uh, we've configured it. Um, the only other thing is um, in the spec we got, it had the 4G card preloaded. So I think that's something you need to preload to be able to have in this machine. I think having used this laptop at a weekend, it was um, it was actually quite interesting that I think I've had to charge it twice in twice, maybe three times in a day, um, continuously using it. So that means maybe four hours realistic battery life. If this part of the laptop seemed to heat up quite easily, when, especially if you have it plugged in, and um, the other side is actually quite cool. Um, on the base cover, um, it, um, air gets put in here and exits there, quite a straightforward large heat pipe. Um, it runs a little bit hotter than the X1 Carbon when we're doing similar workload. Um, you can probably see some screenshots and stuff online. We haven't tried throttling it. Um, you can really find that on the notebook checks. They've got some, some good temperature stuff on there. So why should you get this laptop? It's um, well, it's really hot within the night. It's remarkable when you first feel it. I think that will remain the selling point. Um, keyboard is decent. Seems better than the M1 Mac, which is um, important if you want to type more. Um, I think it's, um, you know, things I really like about this laptop. Well, it's a really good media experience, as in the good screen and uh, decent speakers for its size. For a first gen product, it's really good to see it getting it correctly. Keyboard is better than the Mac uh, M1. It's um, quite a low bar to aim for, but um, you know it's a little bit better. That's good. I would probably say the battery life for 48 watts hour battery is reasonable. It's in line with what you'd expect on a Windows laptop, but I guess Windows is a limitation at the moment. What can be improved? Well, really more ports for the next generation. That'd be really good. I'm not having the 32 gig option of the RAM. I think that's disappointing. I think most people will probably go for the um, i5 version of this um, because performance wise it's not going to be that different I think. There's one more thing to talk about which is the price. Um, so this laptop costs us over £2,000 just. Um, that's a lot. If we focus just on the Lenovo laptops, pretend nobody else exists, then I guess it makes sense. It's, um, it's a really really premium laptop. It sits similarly or slightly above the carbon so that explains pricing some people really appreciate the thin and light i guess it's um that's important so that's what the premium is effectively over uh, x13 intel version you get a more similar build to a carbon um, along with the carbon price but with a, those few hundred grams of saving over x13 is justifiable at the cost currently, um, we don't really know. Um, there's another component, which is um, that this is a Gen 1 product. So as per the name, you can't get um, a Nano before this. So in a year or so, you can probably buy this machine in the refurbished channel used or similar at a better price. But there's literally no product like this 
before this from Lenovo that's exactly like this. So what that means is that it carries a premium and if you want it you can get a new right now. So now if we just consider the reality where other manufacturers exist and Apple does have that M1 thing then it makes the value proposition of this laptop a little bit harder to justify in a pandemic when nobody can really travel that much right now. When you watch this in the future, this will change. But right now, paying extra for that portability um, is harder to justify. Uh, XPS probably would cost one thousand seven hundred pounds, so that's a couple of hundred pounds less than this. It has the 4K option, um, 11th gen. Um, it's heavier at 1.3 kilos, but it's a tried and tested chassis. They always improve it each step along the way.